Now let's get started with the calculation example for currency futures. Now, because to show you the hedge outcome using currency futures, right, so now it's 1st January, and we are given the futures contract that because the EU company, so we are based in the EU, that our currency is in Euro, we will be receiving the foreign currency in dollar in four months' time. So this means that now it's 1st January, so it's likely that we will be receiving that money on 1st May from our foreign customer. Now if that's the case then, we need to firstly choose from the currency futures contract because we know that there will be different expiry date for different currency futures contract. So we are given the May futures contract. So this means that the currency futures contract will expire at the end of May, which means 31st May. Or August contract, 31st August. From my perspective, because that we are going to be receiving that money on 1st May, I would like to lock the exchange rate, which is quite close, to 1st May, rather than on 31st August, because the exchange rate would tend to fluctuate in a longer period of time. So therefore, I would like to choose the contract that's mostly close to the actual transaction though, so I would like to choose the May contract there. So, the May contract, as you can see the quote, the base currency is in Euro. The base currency in the quote is also known as the contract currency. Now, let's determine this firstly, before we move any further. We are based in EU, we like to receive in dollars. Now, you receive in dollars, the first thing you need to do is to sell dollar. Dollar is not the contract currency, and this is why you will need to determine to buy euro as your next step. Right, buy euro, full stop. Because buy euro, euro is our contract currency, and that's it. So, what we need to think about there is that we need to open the deal to buy futures, and later on, we would like to close the deal on the settlement date. So the settlement date, I would say, is that when we receive money from a foreign customer on 1st May, we would like to close out the deal. Close out the deal, this means that we would like to sell futures. So because we've bought it already, so we do it in an opposite way, which means to sell it later on. Okay, so we calculate the gains and losses from it. Okay, so this is how it goes. Okay, so very, very important there. Now we're told about the contract currency is the, is the euro, and that's fine there. Now, when we are showing the hedge outcome, okay, so usually, under the traditional approach, before I introduce to you the uh, approach that you need to use on the exam day, is that firstly, I would lay out the pro forma, or the CPA pro forma, which means my own mnemonic. So firstly, I will need to consider the action. The action is going to receive money, so use plots there. Now, how can we determine that consider action here in the currency futures uh, questions? Is that Firstly, I would like to use the amount and then I would like to exercise that amount, which means to receive money of $20 million at a particular exchange rate, which means that we'll need to take the exchange rate on the right hand side, which only be the actual exchange rate. Why we are calling this is the actual? Well, there's no need for you to do that in the currency futures, because we will need to study the currency options later on. So I would like to use actual here to stand for the fact that 
we will have to use this rate. However, in the currency futures piece, the binding contract, very similar to the forward market hedge, and we will have to use that particular exchange rate that we agreed before of 1.3698. So 1.3698, and we put the dollars as the first currency, which is the variable currency, and the base currency is in euro, right. Because the first currency, as you can say, are the same, so we use divide, so when we are considering action, how much money is that we can receive in total of 40,606,72. Okay, so that would be our starting point. The next things that we need to do is we need to calculate the profit or loss from the futures market. Okay, because there'll be a fix up with the basis risk that comes uh, uh, nasty stuff, okay, that we've seen before. Now, to do this, we'll always need to open a working so we can calculate the actual receipt, okay, in combination with the uh, cash market and the futures market. And that's all we need to do. So, CPA approach. So, show working here the profit or loss from the futures. Similar to what we've seen before, firstly, you will need to determine the day and also the settlement day. And uh, settlement, which means when transaction actually takes place on 1st May and now it's on 1st January. Okay. Now, as I told you before, that I've got the spot price and the futures price. And of course, spot minus futures, and that will be the basis. Now let's begin. What will be the spot price today on 1st January? So we are told the spot rate is per euro, it's like 1.3618, so 1.3618, so you can say that is per euro, okay, $1.3618. We are focusing on the euro, okay, so we are focusing on $1.3618 now. Now, we enter into the futures contract like $1.3698. Okay, so we put a currency in, but you don't really have to in the exam. So, also you need to tell yourself that because the first deal, the open a deal, so you need to buy the futures, okay? As I said to you before, you need to buy the euro. Now, which means that when we close out the deal later on, we need to sell it on the settlement date. Now, let's calculate that basis. Now, what do I mean by basis? is the expected cost, okay? When you think about the apple in the previous section, that we talked to you before, that because we will expect to incur the future transportation costs and something like that. So this is why 1.3618 minus 98, okay, it's like uh, minus 0 0.008 dollars per euro. Right. Now, here's the funny part. Futures price is where we are estimating what will be the future price, okay, at some point in the future. However, when it will be on, let's say, 1st May or even 31st May, it's not a future any longer. It's not a future stuff any longer because the future stuff actually becomes the actual stuff. So at some point in the future, the futures price will be the same as the actual price. Okay, so which means that as time goes by, for example, now let's say that the spot price is this, and the future price will be this, and as time goes by, the future price will be this. And the spot price would be this. So at some point in the future, 
two prices would be the same. There'll be no basis any longer, so which means that as time goes by, the basis will reduce on a constant basis. Okay, so that's the idea behind it. Now, the way that we assume in this example, for the reduction in basis, we always use the straight line method. Have you heard of the term straight line method? I'm sure the answer is yes. When you're dealing with the property plant equipment, it's like the depreciation. Yes, you're right. So this means that it's like 0.008 needs to be eliminated, okay, when it is on 31st May, when the contract expires. However, up until 1st May, 1st May and 31st May, we still got one month left before the contract actually expired. So if this is the case, then I would say that these 0.008, when we are working out that closing basis, basis means the difference between the spots and features price is like the amount left. So it's like closing inventory, that kind of stuff, but it's not an inventory, but it's something that is left, okay, on first May. Now, let's see then. From 1st January up to 31st May, how many months are there? 1st January up to 31st May, we convert 31st May to 1st June, 1st June minus 1st January, and that would be five months in total. So this means that from here to here, that would be five months in total. And from 1st May to 31st May, one month left here. So this means that for 0.008, if I were to divide into five months, because from now up to the contract expires, five months in total, there's still one month left, it times by one. So if on the exam day it's not on 1st May, but it's on 1st April, of course two months left, you need to times by two. So the closing basis in this way is like minus 0 0.0016 per euro. Okay. Now, the funny part here. If you're not told about any settlement date farther here, you will need to assume that on Thursday, the spot price still being $1.3618 per euro, unless you're told about that. And of course, in real life, we always know the spot rate on the settlement date, okay, by checking on the internet and something like that. But in the exam, we are predicting the future, so we are not given that. So we need to assume the figure is the same as on 1st January that I before. Because we know the mathematical relationship that spot minus futures, now spot minus futures, that becomes minus 0 0.0016. And therefore, we need to work out the closing futures price. So we take spot and to minus this minus 0 0.0016. So which means that I would like to use 1.3618 minus minus 0 0.0016. So it will give me the closing futures price being... $1.3714 per euro. Sounds a bit complicated, but in fact it's not. Now, we need to work out the futures, gains and losses. Think about it this way. Now, you buy at 698, but you can sell at 714. You can sell more. So you end up having a gain in the futures market. The gain would be, we take 714 minus 698, and that becomes a gain 
0.0016 dollars per euro. So what you need to do for the gain, you slot this bank, 0.0016. Okay, so that's all we can do. Now, what will be a total PNL? Because the total euro we will receive will be a uh, fourteen six hundred six seventy two. For each euro, I can earn not point double sixteen. So the total euro I can get fourteen six hundred six seventy two. So we times them all together. The total game will be seventeen and eighty three dollars. So the total receipt to our business. So plotting all of these two all together, and that will give me the actual receipt in total, 40 million six seventeen seven fifty four euro. So this is how we use the currency features. Sounds a bit scary. Now I would like to use another approach, which is the uh, current exam approach, that we can directly work this out, but very similar to what we've seen before. Firstly, you will need to take the spot minus the futures price to work out that basis to be 0 0.008, okay, as a starting point. You will then need to work out the closing basis, and here will be 0 0.0016 minus that. So what you have to do is to calculate something called the effective rate. So all you need to do is to take the futures price directly plots that closing basis. And after you work out that effective rate, you will need to take the receipt and convert at the effective rate, and that will give you the actual receipt. Now, let's put all of these all together. So under the current exam approach, It's a bit easier, I would say. Firstly, you will need to see the actual transaction, and here is the amount of receipt in foreign currency, worth of $20 million there. And you will need to put the exchange rate on the right-hand side, and here is the exchange rate. It's the effective exchange rate. And you need to work this out. So that will give you the total actual receipt, which is the same as what we've seen before. Now, to work out that effective exchange rate, you will need to work out that closing basis. So all you need to do is to take the spot price and to minus the futures price. And then for that basis, you will need to divide this into how many months from today up to the expiry date and times by the months left which is from the settlement date up to the contract expiry date. Which means that to work out that closing basis, firstly, okay, so work out that closing basis, which is the Now, what we need to do, for example, We see that the spot price 1.3618, futures price 19, I would say, and divide this into the total months, as I said before, from 1st January 
up to 31st May, five months in total. And on the settlement date, it will be on 1st May, up to 31st May, still one month to go. So we can work out the closing basis, same as what we've seen before, minus 0 0.0016. Now, what we need to do is that we need to take the futures price and to plot that closing basis. The closing basis is minus 0 0.0016. The futures price was 1.3698. So the effective exchange rate here, in total, we take 1.3698 minus, because we plot the negative figure, so effectively we are minusing 0.0016. So that becomes 1.3682. Okay. So quote that there is per euro exchange into 1.3682 dollars there. First currency will be the same, so we use divide, so we can work out that total euro worth of 14, 6, 17, 7, 46 euro. That is what we need to do. Now, effectively, if you want to prove this, for example, that you can use, yes, you receive 20 million dollars and so you can exchange it into 14, 6, 17, 7, 46 euro. So effectively, that effective rate, if you use one divide by another, and that would effectively gives you 1.3682 per euro. Okay, so this is how we do it. So this is how we do it. We can prove it here. So that would give us the same result compared to the traditional approach or CPA approach here. The result would be just the same. So make sure that you're ready. Two approaches, but nowadays we use this approach, okay? So relatively straightforward for you to tackle this in the actual exam. And of course, when talking about the currency futures, I noticed that the current exam question not only asks you to calculate the numbers, but also asks you that how the exchange itself will protect the companies when entering into the uh, currency futures transactions from default risk. Because unlike what you've seen in uh, the forward contract, if you're dealing with the counterparty, it's not a bank or a small bank that might be exposed yourself to potential uh, default risk. However, using a currency futures basis using the margin system, it's highly unlikely that you can default on payment. Okay, so make sure that we are always be ready for that. So currency futures, yes, will be a standardized contract and you have to exercise it, it's binding and it requires margin, so which means that you have to consider the liquidity risk for that. And there are two reasons that it will give rise to imperfect hedge. Firstly, rounding difference, okay, rounding problems in the contract, and secondly, the basis risk, which means the change in the uh, spot price will not be equal in the changes in the futures price. So make sure they're ready. Right there, I'm going to be stopping the big section on chapter 33, the currency futures. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye. APC, accounting for your future.